my day-to-day -day thing is just looking for a new job. Uh, I'm looking for waiting tables or, you know, uh, working anywhere really that will hire me. And uh, it sucks. Before that, uh, I was snowboarding for a living and I did that from 2003 to about 2009. My original uh, like main sponsors were Solomon, Smith, Drop, uh, Bonfire, uh, Elm, Breckenridge, um, and that's changed you know, here and there. You know, I put everything I had into it seven days a week, 110% devotion to, to make it. So it was a lot, man. But yeah, when I was 17, my mom kicked me out of the house and she changed the locks. So she, I moved a thousand miles away and I didn't really know anybody. I had like one to two friends in Colorado. So the first part of it was brutal, dude. I'd call my mom up and be like, it sucks out here, you know, I'm broke, I got nothing. And, and you know, she would just be like, whatever, you know? <laughs> She'd be like, good luck. She's like, I know you're gonna make it. So I came to Breckenridge and I had like $600 in my pocket. I had just bought a Honda Civic, which sucks in Breckenridge. Um, and I had one month of rent covered with no job. So yeah, instantly, you know, I hit like, I, I remember in one season, and I never lasted more than two weeks at one place. Um, but I worked at like Conoco, Loaf and Jug, City Market, uh, Subway, um, and then I'd do like odd jobs. And I was literally getting fired from those every two weeks because they'd be like, "You're snowboarding too much." And I'd be like, "That's what I want to do." You know, I think it really hit me um, when I walked into a shop with my team manager. Uh, to pick up a copy of the, the trans world cover that I was on and I had a uh, huge banner um, from a bonfire advertisement in that shop and I didn't even know about that and I think it hit me right there I was just like this this feels like you've made it Solomon ad, the bonfire ads, you know, those were those were highlights because to me that's what you meant meant for making it within a brand. You know, they gave you respect, they advertise you, you know, they feel like you're influential and snowboarding. We just traveled everywhere. It was cool. It was a true adventure. It was absolutely, you know, like a true adventure. That was like my favorite year, you know, it's not worth it. Then um, after that, you know, it kind of all just went very quickly. I got a phone call and it was just like real brief after riding for this brand for like a decade, man, and just giving them everything I had. I got a two minute phone call that just told me, hey dude, like you're a little bit out of our uh, marketing range, you know, you're a little too old for us now. and. Um, you know, you don't really fit with our image anymore. We're going in a new direction, so thanks for everything, and um, we won't be renewing your contract. Like, that was it, and it was like, board, boots, bindings, uh, jacket, pants, all your sponsors, it was in one. I had all my eggs in one basket, so when I got that phone call, I was devastated. Uh, yeah, I didn't really know what to do. There's not really too many words that can explain it. It was, it was like a huge, uh, devastating day. And I think once you like pick up the pieces, you say to yourself, hey, I can continue doing this, you know. But some things at the end of the day are out of your hands and getting sponsored by someone else to fit their, fit their image and marketing and a lot of other things. I never picked it back up. I never, I never got uh, great, great paying sponsors again. I didn't know it at the time, but that was the last day of 
you know, my professional career. I was 23 years old when I got cut. Like, being told that you're too old at 23 years old, like, you're like, all right, that's kind of messed up, man. Like, I definitely don't feel old. It's funny, man, because it's totally come back full circle, you know, from being a, like, 17-year-old, financially. <clears throat> from being that 17-year-old to, like, not having any money and, like, having a dream and starting something and, you know, all that stuff. I think that now, seeing it come full circle, it's like, and you learned a lot within the business. There are huge wake-up calls, man. And, you know, you gotta realize at the end of the day, what I learned is that snowboarding or any of those type of careers, they're just short-term. So I guess, I guess what all I've taken out of it is that, you know, um, with some inspiration and, and hard work, you know, you can, you can make what you believe in happen. I feel so, so fortunate because I have all these extremely talented friends surrounded by me now. And, you know, it's just so great to like, you know, have all this travel experience and uh, great times, you know, some of them I don't remember, some of them I do, you know, it was just like a, an awesome experience, like, I, I wouldn't trade any of that, you know, I would do all that over right now, you know, if, if we were to do it again. Yeah, I had the, I had the time of my life like the last seven years. Well, this last summer, you know, I was sitting in New Zealand and I got done with the snowboarding contest and just, I was like, I need to start something on my own, you know, it's always been a dream of mine to do this and that's kind of the inspiration, you know, it's like when you don't like how things are going in your life and you want to do something better or different, that's when you like really get the motivation to try something new. So that's where Yeah Nice came about. And I ended up starting a clothing brand that launches in two months. We've just been promoting it for the last eight months. And yeah, it's exciting times. It's been a huge change of pace going from the snowboarding lifestyle to trying to be a brand owner and also working as a waiter. Right now, we're at the second Yeah Nice Thursday. Playing a trick, get a stick. We've been putting a lot of effort into marketing and handing out stickers and Facebook and social networking and all that kind of stuff, but we launched in two months. You know, I don't know. I think everything's looking good. We got some shops on board. We got we got a lot of kids, you know, excited about it. And it seems to be having like this almost it's like falling right now, you know, where like there's there's kids that are excited about it when you see them, they've like heard about you, you know, and they're like, they're like, yeah, nice, you know, and they like yell that out to you in the lift line or somewhere else, and they're like, that's what it's on, dude. You're like, yeah. <laughs> It's gonna be rad to see what's gonna happen next.